Warren Buffett stands out as one of history's most accomplished investors. Imagine if you had placed just $1,000 into his firm, Berkshire Hathaway, when he first took the helm, your investment would have ballooned to over $21 million today, and that's accounting for recent market downturns. This represents an average annual return of about 20%, a staggering figure, especially when you consider that the S&P 500 typically offers an average return of 10% each year. So, what's the secret behind Buffett's extraordinary success, propelling him to the ranks of the world's wealthiest? It boils down to his investment strategies and a few core principles which we'll delve into in this video. Welcome to Money Market Investing, where we empower you with knowledge about money, personal finance, and investing. If you're geared towards enhancing your financial horizon, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And if you find value in our content, a thumbs up would be much appreciated. Warren Buffett, principle number one, cash is a poor investment. In our ever volatile financial environment, Buffett staunchly champions the shift from holding on to cash to investing in tangible assets. This is especially pivotal considering the unpredictable trajectory of the dollar's value. It's worth noting that Buffett doesn't imply hoarding cash is never a wise move. In fact, maintaining a suitable reserve is essential. However, excess cash is a concern for him, as he's expressed having surplus cash often brings discontent. He'd rather see those funds efficiently deployed, pointing to his recent endeavors where over $40 billion was invested, underscoring that in the realm of business, the true worth of a dollar is in its ability to generate more. Buffett's principle number two, investing in productive assets. Let's break this down with an illustrative analogy. Imagine owning all the gold in the world, which could be shaped into a cube roughly 67 or 68 feet on each side. Climb atop that golden monolith and you might feel like the king of the world. Sure, you could polish that gold, admire its sheen, even showcase it, but intrinsically it remains unproductive. When you acquire such an asset, your hope is primarily that someone else, perhaps years down the line, would be willing to buy it at a higher price, even though it doesn't inherently produce value. And here's another critical piece of Buffett's philosophy. Market fluctuations in the short term shouldn't matter. What truly matters is its inherent value and the returns it can yield in the long run. Just as you wouldn't obsess over the daily fluctuating price of a farm you own, Buffett doesn't agonize over weekly stock quotes. At the core of his strategy when looking at investments like Berkshire, it's about the value and productivity of the assets owned. Number three, stay in your circle of competence. This is a fundamental principle that underscores the importance of operating within your realm of expertise. Buffett himself is a testament to the efficacy of this principle. It's about understanding your strengths and weaknesses, knowing what you know, and perhaps even more importantly, recognizing what you don't know. An illustrative example of Buffett's adhering to this principle can be drawn from his initial avoidance of tech stocks. For a significant period, he stayed away from them not because they weren't valuable, but because he admitted to not understanding the tech industry well enough. It wasn't within his circle of competence. In the late 90s and early 2000s, when tech stocks were the rage and many were jumping on the bandwagon, Buffett refrained. And when the dot-com bubble burst, his wisdom was revealed. In his writings, Buffett frequently cites an allegory that's become integral to his investment philosophy. The baseball player who only swings at pitches he knows he can hit. He emphasizes that there's no penalty in investing for letting good opportunities pass by if you aren't entirely sure about them. The legendary investor underscores the importance of patience and waiting for the right opportunities, where you're confident in your understanding and analysis. The quote in the provided text, presumably referring to something Benjamin Graham, Buffett's mentor, once expressed, emphasizes the value of in-depth evaluation. In this context of Buffett, one could draw parallels to his meticulous analysis of companies like Coca-Cola and American Express. He invested in these companies not just because they were substantial entities, but because he understood their business models, their market positions, and their potential for long-term value generation inside and out. So, when considering investment, Buffett's approach is analogous to being a genius who does a few things. He evaluates companies with precision, seeking those worth at least $100 million, not just at a first glance at the price, but based on an intricate understanding of the business, its competencies, and its competitive advantages. Number four, evaluate companies first, understand their true worth. Warren Buffett's approach to investing is characterized by his unwavering commitment to a core principle. Understand a company's intrinsic value before considering its stock price. For Buffett, the value of a company isn't solely reflected in its current market price. Instead, it's the underlying fundamentals and the long-term potential of the business that matter most. One of the most well-known anecdotes that exemplifies this principle involves Buffett 
Buffett's investment in the Washington Post. In the early 1970s, the newspaper industry was going through tumultuous times, and the stock market was undervaluing the Washington Post. While most investors were fixated on the dropping stock price, Buffett looked at the company's assets, its loyal readership, and its position in the media landscape. Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway began buying the stock, and by 1973, he had acquired a significant stake. Over the ensuing decades, that investment yielded substantial returns as the company's true value became evident to the market. Another hallmark of Buffett's evaluation technique is his affinity for moats, a term he uses metaphorically to describe a company's competitive advantage. When he evaluates a company, he doesn't just look at its current financial statements. He dives into its strategic position in the market. Does it have a unique selling proposition? Does it hold a dominant position in its sector? These moats are indicators of a company's long-term sustainability and growth potential. Coca-Cola, with its iconic brand and global distribution, is an example of a company with a strong moat that Buffett invested in and has held on to for decades. Buffett's approach also involves understanding the management behind the company. He has often spoke about the importance of investing in businesses led by competent and ethical leaders. He believes that a great business in the hands of a mediocre management can soon become a mediocre business. In essence, Buffett's strategy of evaluating companies emphasizes looking beyond the current stock price. Instead, he delves deep into understanding the real worth of a company, its assets, its competitive position, its growth potential, and its leadership. Number 5. Think big and don't waste opportunities. The analogy of a lifetime punch card. Warren Buffett often advocates for a discerning and selective approach to investing, akin to having a limited number of punches on a card throughout one's lifetime. Imagine being handed a punch card when you graduate school, allowing for only 20 investments throughout your entire life. With such a restriction, you'd likely be extremely careful, deliberate, and thoughtful about each investment decision you make. Buffett encourages investors to adopt this mentality even without a literal punch card in hand. A prime example that underscores this principle in Buffett's career is his investment in American Express in the 1960s. At the time, the company faced a severe financial crisis due to the infamous salad oil scandal. Many investors were fleeing, but Buffett saw an opportunity. He did his homework evaluated the company's long-term value, and trusted its inherent strength and brand reputation. Recognizing the temporary nature of the scandal in relation to the company's overall worth, he made a significant investment. This wasn't a casual move. It was a calculated punch based on his deep analysis and belief in the company's fundamentals and resilience. As history would have it, this investment turned out to be one of his most profitable ones. A small investment in a promising startup can be as big as a hefty investment in a well-established corporation if it aligns with the investor's understanding and vision. Buffett's punch card philosophy is a stark reminder in today's fast-paced, information-overloaded world. Take your time, do your due diligence, and make each investment count. Rather than scattering one's focus and resources thinly over numerous opportunities, concentrate on the few that truly resonate, offering both significant value and aligning with one's personal understanding and strategy. Number 6. Invest in yourself, your most valuable asset. Warren Buffett consistently emphasizes emphasizes the invaluable return of investing in oneself. He believes that while markets fluctuate and investments come and go, the skills and talents you develop are truly irreplaceable. They're assets that neither downturns nor competitors can ever take away from you. To elucidate this idea, Buffett often poses an intriguing proposition to students. He asks them to imagine if he offered to buy 10% of their future earnings for $100,000. By this valuation, each student would represent a $1 million asset. If these students could then elevate their skills, say by enhancing their communication abilities, both in speech and writing, they could potentially increase their intrinsic value by 50%. That's an additional $500,000 just by honing a single skill set. Buffett's message is clear. Self-improvement and personal growth are invaluable. While he often cites communication as a pivotal skill, the broader lesson here is about relentless self-betterment. This could be in the form of gaining new expertise, cultivating positive habits, or simply surrounding oneself with role models and emulating their admirable qualities. He encourages people, especially the young, to meticulously analyze and recognize what makes certain individuals stand out and succeed. What traits make someone admirable? Often it's more than just raw talent or strength. Buffett stresses that these are attributes anyone can foster with intention and effort. By internalizing and practicing such qualities, one builds an impenetrable moat around themselves, bolstering their personal and professional value.